Alright guys, welcome to another Autronics video. In this video we've got a Asus or Asus laptop. Um, and the model number for this laptop reads... Where are we? Here we go. So F512D. That's a notebook PC. Um, this one has come in with a complaint uh, that it doesn't turn on. Um, and so we'll plug our power supply in and we'll see what's going on with this. Um, and we'll let you take the motherboard out and then I'll restart the video and see what we have from there. So bear with me while I do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed this from the housing of the laptop, removed this heatsink as well. Whenever I'm working on motherboards like that, I like to remove everything that's on there. Um, just so we know that our diagnosis and moving forward is okay. Now, um, this video is going to look at how to find a fault within the motherboard. What are the my steps to doing this? Um, and everyone has their own, so the way that I do it and how to find what's going on. Um, the first thing I do is I start off by physically inspecting the board. So I look at, um, use your eyes and use your uh, senses to see, physically see if anything's burnt or damaged or or anything like that so we just work our way around and right from the start I don't see anything physically burnt or damaged and so if anyone is wondering um, the board number and stuff like that it's down there at least some there there's a sticker with it as well Okay, so I can't see anything that's standing out to be burnt or looking particularly out of its place. So let's uh, let's plug our power supply in. So I've got this little um, universal connector that connects up to my power supply. Let's just go down to there. Let's turn the power supply on. Set our voltages. So I've got it at 19 volts at 1.5 amps. And let's see what happens when we plug our connector in. So we have a 0.05, sorry, 0 0.005 of uh, amp draw. And I'm just going to feel around the board to feel if anything's heating up or not. I mean, that's quite a very low current draw. Okay, no, don't feel anything. No, don't really feel anything that's out of place or heating up. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's still quite a low amp draw. Okay, so let's disconnect our power supply. And uh, we'll bring in our multimeter. Let's place it here where you guys can see as well. And straight from there, I am going to turn my multimeter on to voltage. Okay, that's the sign DC volts here. And connect my power supply back on. And what I just want to confirm is if the board is actually taking voltage. So any one of these uh, brown areas here are all ground. So you can use any one of those. I place my hands here so I'm not leaning over the multimeter and uh, let's just check if we have 19 coming in and we do okay and just randomly probe around and see if we get 19 volts um, or where we get 19 volts up to and through here that should be ground other side a um, couple of other random spots Okay, cool, whatever else have we got, um, let's have a look here, nothing on that side, nothing, nothing, okay, so just randomly probe around and have a look at um, if these voltages present anywhere, let's have a look at this. What is this? Uh, 
Okay, so that's the HDMI. And over here. Okay, cool. So we know 19 volts is going into the board. Now we need to confirm if we have a short on the board or if there is something that's not working accordingly on this board. So let's disconnect our power. Okay, and then let's just check. We have no power going in. Okay, good. Now what I do is I tend to go into diode mode, which is this symbol here. And then I put my red probe on ground. So again, any one of these spots here, red probe on ground. And then I check on my 19 volt line here. And if I have a short, so, and then if I go reverse this, if you don't have too much, and then I'll check on ohms again. So let's select ohms and then let's select to ground and we are discharging okay so that's not enough to tell me that something significant is going on into this board um so i don't see any shorts so what i'm going to do is bring so go into my multimeter volts mode bring my power supply back in and the way these uh these things work is you have um, the power going in here it goes through two mosfets uh, first one and then the second one and then it supplies power to the rest of the motherboard and you have your mosfet so what i'm looking for now see if i can grab some tweezers and i'll show you is power will come into here and then it'll go through two mosfets and that that is what i'm looking for on this motherboard so right now i don't see anything on this side uh, let's flip the board over and let's have a look so we have our power connector usually they are located next to the power connector so we have the power going in here and so that's your dc jack and so we have power coming in here it goes it goes through that to this phase here and then it comes out over here so that's on the reverse side of that and then there's our first mosfet there and then there's our second one there um okay so let's let's measure our voltages at that point so let's connect our power supply bring your multimeter back in so I will again multimeter on DC mode and again any of these ground points here you can use this you can use this this here any of these copper traces here so I'll just find a random one here and we'll find that the DC jack has power going in which we do 19 volts and then we will check on the side of the fit and we do and let's check on this side of the fit okay am i making good connection here so let's try another one we have 19 volts there and what do we have on this side what do we have here nothing okay so so we have 19 volts on this side of the FET, but nothing on this side here. Okay, so now we know that these, so what happens is voltage comes in, goes through these filters here, goes through onto the other side, um, and then joins up on this side here of the FET here. So you must have 19 volts here, and then it goes across and into this uh, pad here. And this pad, you can follow the trace down and it goes to the rest of the vault, uh, the board with 19 volts present on that rail. And then it supplies to the other rails that are needed. So we don't have any voltage coming on this side here. So we do know we can confirm that we have voltage on this side and we have nothing on this side. Okay, so if you just replace this fit and you put something else, uh, so the similar one here, and you plug the power in and you're still getting nothing going forward right so now we need to confirm as if we have a short on this side of the motherboard so we'll disconnect our dc and we'll go into diode mode and we'll probe red, red probe on ground and we'll check on this side of the motherboard and so we get a good diode reading there um, and on this side and we get a reading on this side so i'm not 100 percent sure if that's believable so let's go on here to discharge and let's go on this side here and that's okay um 
but I'm, I'm not convinced. So what I'm going to do is I will bring my, so I know I've got a DC jack going in, so I'll bring in a power supply uh, set at, say, let's set, set this the current at 1.5, and uh, we'll go voltage at, say, uh, 5 volts. So bring the voltage in at 5 volts. Okay, so we've got our multimeter here, and we'll bring in our power supply, and let's check what my volts are on my power supply. So I've got it set at 5 volts at uh, 1.5 amps. So okay, so that's what we're showing. And uh, let's inject some voltage into the motherboard just to confirm if there is a short. So that's a 19 volt rail, and we're injecting 5 volts into this area here so black probe on any of these ground pads and let's inject here okay so we can automatically see or you guys could probably hear that the power supply uh, this dropped down to 2 volts and it's taking 1.5 amps so we do have a short on this motherboard so let's investigate further so what I will do from here on is I will um, solder a piece of wire onto that side there so with with injecting voltage on that side I need to know where the short is correct so um, and if it's on this side so I can have the probes here and doing this and I need to I also need to feel my way around the motherboard of where this is where the short is right so what I'll do is I've got just a alligator clip here and a exposed wire on the other end and what I will do is I will solder that onto this side. So we have a short on this side of the motherboard. And I will solder this on this side. And we will use our voltage injection tool, which is this right here. And these will be available on our website very soon. And I may do a uh, product review on this and, and tell you guys how good this is. But for time being, so we'll use this one for this video. And let me just uh, grab... The adapter for it. Here we are. So that's the cable for it. So that goes onto that side there. Have that ready. Let's move this up a little. Okay. And waiting for my soldering iron to heat up a little and grab a bit of flux. And we will solder on this side of the MOSFET. So apply a little bit of flux. Okay, so I've applied a little bit of flux. Let's grab our soldering iron. Apply a bit of um, solder to our connection here. Let's zoom you in a little. And let's put a bit of solder on this area here. So we can attach our wire which is this here and let's put that on okay good so that's on and what we'll do now is we'll bring in our short detector and connect our lead up to this and so the way this works is you turn this on you press this button to activate the voltage injection and then if there's a short um, on the motherboard it'll show you by doing that okay so let's find a known good area for ground on our motherboard let's use this right next to it and we'll attach our positive um, wire to our red lead from the motherboard Let's do that and let's apply voltage and because this is a 19 volt rail I suspect 1.2 will not be enough so let's increase the voltage and you can do that by on the side here and so as we go to 1.8 volts we have a 0 0.9 milliamps of short here so let's work our way around the motherboard and seeing where this short is so it's jumping up to an amp and I can't see or feel anything on this side of the motherboard so let's uh, 
Okay, let's um, let's flip the board over and find a known good ground again. So we use this one on the corner here, and let's move you guys further up. Okay, and let's turn. Okay, so it's jumped up to 1.2 amps now, and again, just work your way around. Feeling if there's any heat being generated. Oh, okay, so something here, something here is heating up. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn that off. Let's move this board, bring it over on this side so I can feel it better. Again, turn it back on, put our ground back on, and inject voltage, and let's see if we go higher. So if we go higher at 3 amps, there's a 2.5 volt. Oh, okay, so something <laughs> something here is, is heating up quite rapidly. So that's the, that's the touch, the touch check. <laughs> um, all right, so let's, so we know there's a short, there's something here that's heating up. All right, so let's let's do that again. So let's bring that into focus. And now I will spray some isopropyl on this area. You can use other methods as well. So let's. Um, I'll have to hold this up because I don't want it touching the motherboard. Um, okay, so there's something here. So I'm sh I'll, I'll see if I if I turn this light on. Does that help? Okay, so my screen starts to <laughs> flicker for some reason. What about do this? All right, so something here on this area heated up quite rapidly. So let's inject voltage again. And um, okay, no, let's spray a bit of isopropyl on this area. Okay. And where we're focusing is we're focusing on this area here. So let's inject voltage and okay, can you see that? So that's okay, let's do that one more time. So we're watching on this area here. And so watch this component when I apply voltage. See that? So and these are our problem. So that's what's heating up and that's what's taking our amps. Now you can say, yep, that's where our problem is. And now you'll go ahead, remove that and see if the problem exists. So we'll do that now and um, zoom me out a little bit. And so we know our problem is here. This what looks to be like a MOSFET here. And let's do that again. So we'll disconnect my lead. So a simple process of like that, the multimeter didn't pick it up, but the power supply did. And what I'll do is apply a bit of heat on this area here, and we'll remove that component out, and then inject voltage and see if um, if our fault is still there or is it eliminated. So let's uh, bring in our hot air station. We'll set it to say 400 degrees with a airflow of 30 and we'll apply a bit of flux on this area here so tracing down a fault can be a little bit tricky at times but you can do it if if you just be a little bit patient with things so let's use this board at the bottom so I don't burn, burn my um, cup or my little cutting mat here so I've put a bit of flux on there so just heat up the area I've got it at 450 degrees at 30 airflow so let's do that and I believe this is an in-channel MOSFET so that's causing this so let's apply a bit of heat and put a bit of heat in this area And 
not ready yet. So what we'll do is remove this chip and then we'll um, inject voltage again and see if our short's gone. So if it is, we'll check this component if it is faulty. And then um, we'll get back to the customer and let them know that we found the fault and if they want to proceed with the repair and then we'll do a part 2 video where uh, we'll order the part in, replace it and see if we have eliminated the fault. Have a look, almost there. Never you're doing this sort of stuff, you just have to be a little bit patient. Wait for the solder to melt before you try and uh, remove the component off the motherboard. Because if you do it without that, you'll end up ripping pads and stuff. So, you go. So, it's out. So, that's our little chip there. I'll put it aside, put it here, get rid of my hot air station, wait for the board to cool down a little bit, we can do that with a bit of spray of isopropyl. And what I'll do now is, let's move this here, bring our multimeter into frame, and now what I'm doing is I will set this to diode mode and red probe on ground and I am checking if my short is still here okay so we get a 0.4 okay so that's ground and then on this side okay and that side okay so that's fine because that's a circuit I believe for the CPU and that will be a very low resistance as well so 3.2 very low and um Okay, so that's right. Check here. Okay, cool. So let's um, inject our voltage again. Uh, before we do that, I do want to check this component and see if we have a short on this. So let's bring our multimeter back in. Put that there. And let's see. So we know that this big pad is ground. So that's ground there. And then we have check on this side so we have a direct short and I've got this on um, let's remove this actually so I've got this on diode scale as well and then I can swap the leads as well I can go red probe on ground and we have a direct short either way on the output side and on the input side yeah so we have a direct short on that pit there and we will now Move this out of the way, uh, bring our motherboard here, we're going to do the same process again to see if we have eliminated the short, let's find a known good ground, we can use this here and we can connect our alligator clip to this side and let's apply power, so we've got it there and turn that on and increase voltage to 1.8 Three volts cool so we don't have a short anymore so the problem is identified as being that faulty MOSFET and um, that's all I needed to do with this board here um, and so because I needed to give the customer or the client an answer of where the problem is and uh, if we can fix it and we'll move forward from there so there we go and that's an easy way of how do you trace fault when your multimeter cannot detect whether um, if there is a short on the motherboard you can do that with a bit of voltage injection I will do a review on this uh, particular mechanics um, power supply short circuit detector um, and this will be available on our website pretty soon so there you go guys um, that's a little bit of um, insight onto how you can find a fault on the motherboard by using a voltage injection tool as well as a bit of IPA um, I'm sure there are other methods, but this is the particular way of how I do things. And um, we have identified with that method that the short was on this area here. And that's it, basically. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope this video has helped somebody out there. Thank you.